Amen. Well, it's wonderful to be back in Larkins with you all. Amen. We're looking forward to Kids Crusade. <clears throat> and, uh, this is what, our sixth one? I don't know. Somewhere along the line. Yeah, yeah. So we're excited to be with you all. Yeah. Don't forget you get a point for coming, a point for bringing your Bible, a point for dressing up in a sailor or a pirate costume. Two points, we're known to remember verse, and two points for every person who would like to go and claim this church as their home church. So, amen. Looking forward to that. Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1 this morning. Praise the Lord. And appreciate you all. Appreciate Mr. Seville, their family. And uh, glad we have friends in Pennsylvania. Praise God. And we're just excited about being here. Job chapter 1 this morning, beginning in verse number 7. And the Lord said to Satan, Whence comest thou? Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said to Satan, Hast thou not considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feared God and escheweth evil? And Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught or for nothing? Hast thou not made a hedge, or hast thou not made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? And has blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thy hand now and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. The Lord said to say, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put it not forth thine hand, so Satan went from the presence of the Lord. <coughs> Verse number nine or eight, hast thou considered my servant Job? Want to help us this morning? I said we'd like to preach on some things Satan found at Job's house. Some things Satan found at Job's house. Have you ever found uh, something uh, unusual or unique in your house or uh, on your property? One person I, I heard of, their, their kitchen soul suddenly stopped working. And so they called in the repairman to come and look at it. And when they lifted it up, You see, mice had been storing food for the winter right under their door. They had no idea it was in their house. And so, you know, it's amazing sometimes what you can find when you really start looking around. Right. Anybody ever do your remodeling in your house before? I mean, well, that's what I do when I'm not preaching on the road. I go into houses or remodel kitchens, bathrooms, take out windows and and uh, but you know, usually it's a complete mess. Dusty floors, garbage, bags all over the place. But sometimes that just don't apply. That you just find junk. In fact, in 2006, Amanda Reese invited the contractor Bob Kiss to tear down the bathroom walls in her house in Cleveland, Ohio. When he was halfway done with the job, he, he discovered two green metal boxes inside the bathroom wall. Well, when they opened up those walls, they, they found a lot of rare bills from the 1920s. They made through the Depression time, and they went to resell those old bills, and, and they sold them for $180,000. Wow. It's time to renew your bathroom. I mean, you know, what you going to find in your house? Right. In February 2011, Carl Kishner, 
Amen. I found 700 rare baseball cards that belonged to his grandfather, Carl Hitch, who died in the 1940s. Amen. Carl was cleaning his attic when he saw a box stashed underneath a, a wooden dollhouse. When he opened it, he saw a bunch of old baseball cards he had never seen before. Amen. In fact, experts said this is the biggest, most exciting find in the history of sports card collecting. Amen. He took some of them and sold them and got two to three million dollars. Oh, now it's in your house. It's amazing. I've knocked on people's doors before and, and I hear scurrying all in the house and nobody comes to the door and Amen. They was afraid of what I might find in their house or find how they was, you know, their appearance. But, amen. For many years, there was a simple $29 painting, painting hanging on a house wall, a hallway wall in Indiana. I guess, somehow there was a hole in the wall. I don't know if somebody punched it or what exactly happened, but there was a hole in the wall. And, Instead of doing the, you know, the right thing, fixing the hall, they just bought a $29 picture at some thrift store or antique store, hung it on the wall. But finally, the, the family found a new game, amen, called Masterpiece. And it's a board game that, that uh, teaches you about old paintings, whatever. And the, and the husband realized, you know, that looks like a painting we have on the wall in the hall. Took it to an art place and uh, found out it was the third most valuable painting by Martin Johnson Heed, and it was called Magnolias on Gold Velvet Cloth. And amen, they sold it to the Museum of Fine Arts in Houston for $1.25 million. What's in your house? Yes. Yes. Give me one more. Amen. In 2013, while doing renovations in a house, contractor David Gonzalez found a comic book among newspapers used as insulations in the wall. And what was unique about the comic book he found was it was an extremely rare edition of uh, action comics in which maybe Superman makes his first appearance. It had been hidden in the wall for seven years. Amen. Amen. When he sold it, it was worth $175,000. Amen. But Mr. Gonzalez lost $50,000 because he accidentally tore the back cover. Amen. Of the comic book. But I'm talking about, amen, what's in your house this morning? Yes. Amen. amen. It's interesting what we can find if we look hard enough. We read this story of Job and we thought, well, I don't really see anything out of the norm. I've heard it a hundred times. You may not. Amen. I tell you, the devil did. Amen. He, he went to roaming around, pillaging, if you will, to Job's house, expecting to find one thing, but he found a whole lot more than what he was expecting. You know what amazes me sometimes? The boldness the devil has, even the cluelessness that he portrays. Amen. He thinks the same way that so many of the world thinks that. While well, there isn't much to the average believer, amen, they go to church, they waste their time, and they really don't have much inside. Amen. They're nothing more than a bunch of hypocrites holding on to nothing. Amen. They're serving God simply for what they can get out of them. Amen. God's blessings are just God paying them for going to church and serving Him. That's what the devil thinks. Oh, yes. Amen. That's what some of the world thinks. Right. I want you to know the devil got definitely more than he bargained for when he poked around Job's Yes, he is. What are some things he could find? Four of them this morning, I believe. Number one, he found a hedge that he could not penetrate. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. A hedge he could not penetrate them. Amen. Satan answered the Lord and said to not, the Job served God for not has not made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he had on every side and blessed the work of his 
stanza. His substance is increased to the land. But put forth thine hand now and touch all that he have, and he will curse thee to thy face. Yes. What is a hedge? Hedge is simply a wall. It's a fence. You go in, into any foreign country, and they've got walls around their house. They've been a lot of times with metal on top of it or broken piece of glass, so you cannot even climb over that and to get inside their property, their compound. Amen. And it's a wall. It is a, a protection. It is your defense. Amen. I want you to realize when you gave your heart to Jesus Christ, amen, God put a hedge of protection amen, around you this morning. It is your divine and the vaccination. It gives you the power of immunity from the devil coming in to kill and to steal and destroy. Amen. In the old time, he would like to. Amen. The Hebrew word of hedge means to be entwined in. Shut in. And I don't know about you, but there's nothing better than I would like to be shut in with God. Amen. And tangled, wrapped up in God. Amen. Wrapped up in His love. Wrapped up in His mercy. Wrapped up in His presence. Amen. You know what? Too many people look at the negatives, what they've got to give up to get saved. Sure. Yeah. I've never given up anything I regretted. You know what? <laughs> Can I tell you about what we gain? That's the blessing. Amen. When you stand in sincerity and saintliness and steadfastness, amen, you're going to be afforded the security <coughs> of a hedge that Satan cannot penetrate. Amen. When God created Adam and Eve, He placed them in the Garden of Eden, and that was their hedge, their sanctuary, their safe abode. When they were inside of the garden, amen, nobody could harm them, but they had to guard it. They had to watch it. They had to tend to it. Amen. It's only when they failed, amen, that the enemy came in and stole it from them. Amen. Christian, this morning, I would ask you, are you guarding the garden of your heart? Are you guarding your salvation? Amen. Are you guarding Psalm 125, 1 and 2. But they that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abideth forever. As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so is the Lord round about His people from His forth, or amen, even forever. Zechariah 2, 5. For I, saith the Lord, will be in the her of all. Thou, thou trust. 
the thief don't have that? <laughs> the Bible said in Malachi, you are cursed with the curse, for you have robbed me even this whole nation. Amen. Those, amen, in Malachi, talk about those who don't give and pay their tithes. Amen. God said, I'm going to let the devourer come in and give at you. But if you're living right and doing right and walking right and talking right, amen, God is a wall by night and a shield by day. Amen. Thank God. Give me an example of that. John Pollock and his wife were missionaries to the New Ebony Islands of the South Pacific. And when they arrived, they were the first European peons that the natives had ever seen. <coughs> the tribal uh, 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 magician feared the white intruders, and so he convinced the members of his tribe that those white people were there to murder their children. And so, you know, that got the, all the tribe worked up and, and they got together. They was going to attack John Pollock and his family at night. <coughs> well, they got together, amen, and surrounded the hut John and his wife were in. But the Pollocks got on their knees and began to pray to God and cry out to God all night long. And the night passed and the native warriors never attacked. They continued to work among them, learned their language, and won the trust. And, and many people came to Christ, and finally the chief got saved. And, and one night, amen, John Pollock went to the chief and said, You know, amen, that first night we was here, your tribe surrounded us with spears, but you didn't attack. Why not? And the chief said, Because of all your guards. Where did you get all those men? And he said, It was only my and me. And the chief responded, oh no. All that evening we saw large men with swords in their hands surrounding your hut. We were afraid so we never attacked. Amen. I want you to know that's not back in the Bible days, but recently in the last couple hundred years, I want you to know you might as well serve God church. Amen. God's got a wall of protection around you. Quit The story of Dr. S.W. Mitchell. He was a well-known neurologist in Philadelphia. He went home one day from the office early, just dead, bone tired. He was awoken by a persistent knocking of the door. He just ignored it for a while, but finally the knocking kept on going. When he opened the door, <clears throat> there was a little girl poorly dressed and deeply upset. She told him, her mother was sick and needed his help, and even though it was bitterly cold and snowy that night, and he was tired, he dressed and, and followed the little girl home, and <laughs> he found the mother desperately ill with pneumonia. And after treating her, he complimented the mother on the daughter's, amen, courage and persistence. And the woman gave him a strange look. He said, my daughter died a month ago. Her shoes and coat are in the closet there. Oh, wow. And he went to the closet and opened the door and the very coat worn by the little girl had been at his front door was warm and dry and could not have been possibly used that night. Amen. You can call it whatever you want to call it. Amen. But God can transform His angels. Amen. To whatever it takes to wake up a doctor in the middle of the night. Amen. But this is a sitting mama. I'm telling you. I said you might as well live for God. What's God going to find if you're living right and living holy and living pure? Amen. When the devil comes, he's going to find a hedge he cannot penetrate. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. What else did the devil find when he came to Job's house? Well, he found a heart that he could not provoke. A heart that he could not provoke. Job 1.22 said, In all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Yes, oh, what a testimony this morning. Yes. Satan had just launched an all-out assault on Job's house in an attempt to provoke his heart away from serving God. Amen. <laughs> the calamities... If that we fell, Job came in succession. He got one phone call, if you will, after 
another. He got the one phone call and this disaster and then he hung up the phone before he could mind begin to con comprehend what was going on. He got another one. I mean, the devil came to Job through his finances. He lost his livestock. Amen. The devil came to Job through his family. He lost his loved ones. The devil came through the frailty of his body. Amen. He about lost his life. The devil came to Job through his faithful companion, his lady. Amen. Notice the words that she said. Curse God and die. Isn't that exactly what Satan said that Job would do? He would curse God.
But you know what Job said? I'm going to bless the Lord. I'm going to bless the Lord. Amen. Here's an example of the man. He wasn't looking for the loaf. He wasn't even looking for the crumbs. Amen. That fell from underneath the table. He realized he came in the world with nothing and will leave nothing. But he was grateful for everything he had while he had them. Are you this morning grateful for how God has blessed you with? And what are you going to do if God will take you? But as Satan found at Job's house, he found a, a hedge he could not penetrate, a heart he could not provoke, and a hope he could not persuade. Amen. For 41 chapters, we read of attack and assault and accusation from Satan and, and his friends. So I've been all designed to provoke him away from the hope that he had. But thank God it was to no avail. Amen. Evil attacks on his family, assaults on his flesh, accusations of his friends. The assailant would say, Amen, of the esteem, the devil. Amen. While they drunk and start another family, another business he has well. Amen. Even with the actions of his heavenly father, he said, I can't find God anywhere. In fact, when God did speak in God's longest recorded speech in the Bible, Amen. God He really 
could not persuade. Yeah, you know, Satan came and Satan's going to come to your house. Will he find a hedge he could not penetrate? Yes. A heart he could not provoke. A hope he could not persuade. And lastly, this morning, that's what Satan found when he entered Job's house. A harvest he could not prevent. Amen. I said a harvest he Amen. could not prevent. Amen. Job 42, and the Lord turned the captivity of Job, loosed him when he prayed for his friends. Amen. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. We'll just say he had 5,000 donkeys. God blessed him with 10,000 donkeys in the end. Right. Amen. He said, well, he lost his children. Oh, he didn't lose them. Amen. They was placed up in heaven. Amen. Waiting for him to get there. And those seven or eight children he had, God gave him, amen, exactly the same amount. Amen. And so God, the Lord, gave Job twice as much as he had before. And so the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. Clement, this morning, time will all tell the truth, you will yes. reap what you sow. The truth that Job's life was found in Satan's search of his home. The crop he harvested was a direct result of what he cultivated with the Lord. You know the reason why some people never reap a harvest? Amen. It's because they never cultivate one. They don't grow in a relationship with God. Amen. They never experience the baptism
You'll find the ways of the Lord are past finding out. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, saith the Lord. Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him, but I will maintain my own ways before You see, amen, the, 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 the Bible is not necessarily a book of understanding. It's a book of trust. Yes. I said the Bible is not, just a, not, not always a book of understanding. It's a book of trust. And you'll find the ways of the Lord. Amen. Best of all, amen, you will find the will of God that, amen, no matter how unfair it seems, God's will is best for my life. Amen. My will is based upon what I can see. And God's will is better than my will. And you'll find His will is blessed. When we allow His will to be done in our lives, we always wind up getting blessed. And lastly, amen, on the ash pile, you will find God's whereabouts. Amen. The greatest thing among the ashes is the presence of the Lord. Amen. Job spoke to God. God is listening to you in the ash pile. But best of all, God spoke to Job. Amen. As I said, God gave you double for stand this morning. I'll encourage somebody this morning. At some point in life, you're going to find yourself in the ash pile. Time in this life, you're going to find yourself broken. Kids and I were talking yesterday about somebody we know <coughs> Some things happened in their life. Didn't seem fair, didn't seem right, and, and, and they had just they have just tossed aside everything that they knew and was raised up there. Reaching for something. Life is going to hit you and it's going to break you. Because the devil wants to steal from you. He wants to kill you. And rejoice in the hedge while you have it. If it comes down, it's only for God to use you in greater ways. We wouldn't know nothing about suffering if Job's hedge would have stood up, would we? We would have given up a long time ago. Because Job stood fast to God, we have found the blessings of God. I said we found the blessings of God. Somebody's going to be blessed because you held on to God. Somebody's going to be blessed because you didn't give up. You didn't throw in the towel. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Heavenly Father.